dear students today we are going to study the unit number 5 from your syllabus which is consist of drugs acting on the endocrine system or the endocrine glands okay so these endocrine glands they are going to secrete some of the hormones which are going to show us a some kind of potent effect so now especially in our syllabus what we are having is the sex hormones drugs for erectile dysfunction oral contraceptives corticosteroids thyroid and anti thyroid drug most of these agents are we are using them for treating the variety of the diseases now today we are going to start with the first topic that is the steroids which are having a multiple fold of pharmacological action so upon completion of this topic you will able to understand the chemistry of drugs with respect to their pharmacological activity you will going to understand the drug metabolic pathway adverse effect and the therapeutic value of the drugs you will able to know the sar of this class of the drug and you will going to study a chemical synthesis associated with a given example in the syllabus okay so let us first get acquainted with the steroid now since from their identification in 1935 steroids have served as a wide range of uses initially these steroids they have been isolated from the adrenal glands where it was initially used in a patients who are suffering from addison's disease now today many of the clinical roles of steroids are related to their potent anti inflammatory and immunomodulating properties now though these steroids they are having a multiple folds or the some of the good pharmacological action but their side effects are ranging from common to problematic side effects ranging from a minor case of acne to a cushing syndrome that may be result in diabetes mellitus or some of the potentially life threatening diseases like the diseases of the heart if the side effects remain untreated isn't it so now these steroids they include the different compounds having a variety of pharmacological action from hormones vitamins and cholesterol now for better understanding of the steroid we can divide them we can divide them in different classes like corticosteroids sex hormones and oral contraceptive agents so essentially or what chemically steroid is it is 1 to cyclopentano phenanthrene skeleton isn't it so steroids they are chemically 1 to cyclopentano phenanthrene skeleton now you are going to observe on your screen the four rings are fused with each other who have been named as a b c and d ring okay so now let us try to understand how we are going to give a numbering to this steroid skeleton so now if you going to observe this the numbering is going to get start from ring a wherein it is 1 2 3 4 5 6. then the numbering is going to cover the ring b 6 7 8 9 then the numbering is going to cover the ring c so now after 10 it is 11 12 13 14 then it is going to cover or the wrap ring d so this is the way 
how we going to give numbering to this steroid nucleus is that right so now if you again see this numbering is going to get start from ring a going to wrap this ring b then jumping on ring c and then d so now let us see the next part of nomenclature and the numbering whatsoever steroid that we are going to discuss they are either the derivatives of gonin estrin androstrin and pregnin so now if you going to observe their structure the structures are like this along with the numbering so now look at the first structure that is the gonin so gonin you can call it as like five alpha or beta gonin so the total number of carbons present in this gonin they are 17 now look at the e strain it is the e strain what we what is the main difference between gonin and e strain in case of estrain we have added one beta methyl group and we have given the numbering 18 to it after 17 it is 18 so it is the estrain so now after the estrain the next in this category is the androstrain okay so what is the difference with respect to the estrain we have again added one more carbon atom in between ring a and ring b that is the beta methyl group and we have given numbering 19 over there isn't it so this is the androstrain and the last is the pregnin this pregnin is also have one more additional or two additional not one two additional carbons which are above carbon number 17 which is located at the d ring so it is the 20 and 21 so now again look at the total number of carbon starting from the gonin gonin has 17 carbon estrain has 18 carbon androstrain has 19 carbon and pregnin has 21 carbon atom isn't it so now this thing is or this nomenclature and the numbering system is a basic in a steroid molecule we have to understand while giving the iupsc name first need to understand in which uh, chemical skeleton your structure is there so right now we have studied the four skeletons gonin having 17 carbon estrain having 18 carbon androstrain having 19 carbon and pregnin it is having the 21 carbon atom isn't it so first we have to learn first we need to understand these four basic nucleus which are very very simple to understand now let us study the another part in case of nomenclature zero chemistry and the numbering now while we are when we are going to give the numbering to the steroid skeleton okay we generally we generally see that the stereochemistry of the hydrogen at c5 is always indicated in the name now what is the importance of mentioning the stereochemistry what we are mentioning in the name is that phi alpha or phi beta so now what is meaning of alpha and beta this phi alpha represents the thing that the hydrogen at fifth number carbon atom it is on to the dashed bond is it is on to the dashed bond or it is on to the dotted bond is and it okay now this hydrogen if it becomes the beta hydrogen okay then the juncture the juncture between a and b ring it is going to get changed now let us see this 
okay so now if the hydrogen at fifth position of ring a is on the dashed bond or alpha we will get trans ab junction then we will get the trans ab junction if the same hydrogen is on the wedge bond if it is on to the wedge bond then the junction between ring a and ring b is the cis junction so this is the importance why we are stating the stereochemistry of the carbon atom at number 5 with respect to the hydrogen isn't it so now if you going to observe both of this structure the methyl group in both of these 5 alpha endostrain and 5 beta endostrain these are axial in nature isn't it okay so we have to keep this thing in the mind if it is 5 alpha then the trans junction exist between ring a and ring b at the same time if that hydrogen is the beta if that hydrogen is the beta or if it is on to the wedge then on the wedge bond then we will get the cis ab junction so that is the importance isn't it now one more important point changing the stereochemistry of any one of the ring juncture or backbone carbon it will going to change the shape of the steroid like we have seen in the our example now let us see what uh, is the criteria about mentioning the double bond in a steroid molecule now if the double bond in any of the ring of the steroid is not in between a sequentially numbered carbon atom then both carbons are indicated in the name now when the methyl group is missing from the side chain this is indicated by the prefix nor with number of that carbon atom which has disappeared for example nor ethysterone then it where in the methyl group is missing now let us explore our first point about the double bond now if you see the structure that has been written below that is the structure of delta 5 androstin okay delta so now this delta is used to designate the carbon carbon double bond isn't it this delta this symbol delta is used to designate the carbon carbon double bond in a steroid so what is the meaning of delta 5 delta 5 indicates it is a double bond between the carbon number 5 and carbon number 6 isn't it okay so now whenever you are going to observe any iupac name of the steroid and if you going to observe the sign like delta so always remember delta means it is the indication of the double bond and a superscript letter a superscript letter written on to that delta indicate the position number of that double bond from where that double bond is going to get originate isn't it so now delta 5 in the present example indicate that double bond is going to get originate from carbon number 5 and it is going in sequential manner up to 6 okay so now what happens when the double bond is not in a sequential manner isn't it now let us look at the example okay estra 135 in bracket 10 prime 317 beta diol now if you look at this structure okay you will observe that this double bond between 5 and 10 it is not in a sequence so if i want to designate this double bond using the symbol delta then what i will do i will i will write delta 5 in bracket 10 okay so delta indicates double bond 
and where that double bond is is present it is in between the carbon number 5 and carbon number 10 then right so this is the way how we can represent the double bond position of the double bond in the steroid molecule now let us study more about the stereochemistry of these steroid skeletons so now in the gonin we will going to observe total 6 chiral carbon atoms so which are those chiral carbon atoms the carbon atom located at 5 8 9 10 11 12 13 and 14 so the chiral carbon atoms in the gonin they are located at position number 5 position number 10 position number 9 8 13 and 14 so now as there is appearance of such multiple number of carbon atom in a steroid structure we can have the n number of isomers arising due to the chiral nature of those carbon atom so now if we are having six chiral carbon atoms in a steroid skeleton we will get 64 optical isomer owing to the presence of six chiral carbon atom then if the chiral carbon atom they are going to get increase again by 2 that means if we are having the eight chiral carbon atoms then we are having 256 numbers of optical isomers of the steroid molecule if we are having the nine chiral carbon atom then we can have 512 optical isomers of that steroid skeleton okay so this is the importance of understanding the chiral carbon atoms in a steroid isn't it okay so now this is all with respect to the generalized introduction and the nomenclature of the steroid